This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, my name is Mike Hermes and welcome to my channel. Well guys, today we're going to do a subscriber request that I received actually on the MH Tutorials Hangout group on Facebook. Uh, I posted a model of a hand grenade that I modeled and textured and I received a question whether I could do a video on how to texture that grenade in 3D Coat. So that's what we're going to do. I actually did a video on how to model it as well. Uh, unfortunately that turned out without audio. So I'm not going to post it on YouTube, but if you want it, send me an email and I'll send it over to you. The email address is mh-tutorials at hotmail.com. Okay. Well, that said, let's get started with our tutorial. Here we go. Okay, guys, here we are. We're in 3D Coat, and um, what we're going to do is we are going to texture a hand grenade that I made recently. Okay. Now, to be completely honest, I also did a video on how to model it, but it turned out that the audio was screwed up. So this is a video without audio uh, at all. Uh, nevertheless, I saved it out. So if you want to have that tutorial, send an email to mh-tutorials at hotmail.com and I will send you a um, OneDrive link so you can download it and see how to model it. Okay. Well, that said, I received a question to uh, demonstrate how I did the texturing on this hand grenade. So that's what we're going to do today in 3D Coat. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to go and paint a UV mapped mesh. So we're going to select this guy right here. I'm going to go to my folder and I'm going to go to my grenade. And um, this is my new grenade. OK, and we're going to hit OK. Now, I didn't UV it at all, so I'm going to go to auto mapping and I'm going to choose a 2K size for my maps and hit OK. And we'll give that a sec until it's loaded. Here we go. So it looks like the import went well. It looks uh, OK from every angle pretty much. And now the cool thing about um, 3D code is you don't really need to uh, UV it if you're not going to use it for a game or anything else. If you just want to have a nice render shot on your screen, you could just do it like this. Okay. What I can do, however, is I can jump over to my UV room and you'll see that it auto maps for um, to some extent. And what we can do is we can, uh, let's see, we'll clear seams, clear clusters. So this is pretty much what you will get. And what you can do is you can select, for example, edge loops. And if I want to have a cut, let's say on top right here, you know, I can select that as an edge loop, select that. And you see that I got two different faces here. And that's how I can work my way all the way through. And once I have that, I will click on apply UV set. It tells me it cannot be undone. That's fine. I'll hit OK. And once we go, there it is. Once we go to our paint room, uh, mm -hmm. it will be right here. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to start to give this guy some paint. OK, now I'm going to select a smart material. I want to have a metal surface on this clip up here. So we're going to go into our smart materials. We're going to go to metal and uh, that should be this, I think. Let's see. I'll double click on that. Here we got our metal selection and let's try. Let's see what we've got here. We tried to mix it up a little bit. We'll take this guy. I'm going to double click on it. Yeah, and it's uh, calculating the curvature. We'll just give that a sec. OK, and then it says that it needs an ambient occlusion layer. I'm OK with that. So I'm just going to do that. Open the all. There we go. Hit OK. Let's give that a sec. And you can see that it immediately has been applied, which is nice. OK, so this is my preview window. I'm going to move this over my object to see what that will look like. A bit shiny, so we'll take. I'll double click on this one and I'll use this light metal material from my ring here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my fill bucket, which is down here. I'm going to make sure that I only have um, 
paint, so I don't want any uh, depth, okay? Now I can either take the depth down or just turn that off. So let's see, what's what? Okay, so we're gonna turn this guy off and leave that guy on, okay? We're gonna zoom in and let's start with our clip here. Look at this preview window out of the way. And once we click on that and we have our fill bucket selected, it's gonna almost cover everything that we have in this object. Now I'm gonna take the sides here, okay? And we'll go in here as well and make sure that we cover everything that we can reach. Okay. And I'm going to do this fairly quick, but you know, there we go. Take the side there. And as you can see, it works quite well. Okay. Now, if you're not happy with the extent where it's covered, you can take, you can switch from a bucket to a brush and add to it, but we're going to add some more elements to it in a bit. Now I want a slightly different metal up here. So let's go and try this, double click on it. We'll do a preview, looks slightly different. So I'm still on my fill bucket. So I'm going to click on this. Let's see how that looks. It's not bad. We do need to add quite a bit to get good coverage. So just simply click on it. And you will get some light spots left and right, which is actually pretty cool because it looks a lot like you got some edge issues going on there. But this texture looks nice, so it's good. We have this ring here. Oh, we've got some areas here that we need to cover. This is what I mean with that spotty behavior here, which is not uncommon to something that you would see once in a while on metal. So it's not such a big issue. We'll take this guy, which is normally a bit more tricky to cover. We'll take that little ring up here. And especially in areas like here, you see you need to kind of go back in and make sure that's covered correctly, okay? But it's demonstration purposes, so all right. Now, this ring up here, I want that to be red. So I'm gonna to switch to paint. We're gonna double click on paint here. And we're gonna double click on this guy. And let's have a quick look. Let's click on that. Okay, that's not bad. We're gonna obviously select the rest as well. Just push that up a bit. And you can see that it's not covering those edges and that's due to how it's laid out and so forth. So we're going to switch to a brush and we're going to bring down that intensity a bit. Hang on, let's get the right color. So we're going to go into, uh, let's see. Let's take that color here. Just hang on guys, trying to figure out why I'm getting black. Hang on one sec. Oh, okay, I, I had the wrong brush, sorry. So I'm gonna double click on that. We're gonna go with a nice red, hit okay. And now I should be good, yes I am. So we're gonna hit Control Z. I'm gonna decrease the size of my brush a little bit and we'll switch to the, um, the um, what's it called, airbrush. And we'll go to this guy right here change that size a bit. Okay. Now the cool thing about this is by using two different ways of applying this material, you see that you will get effect like it was kind of spray painted. 
with some darker areas underneath and some highlights and that way you can add some cool effects okay I don't want red on that guy and again I'm not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time on it it's more to demonstrate the possibilities that you have when texturing in uh, 3d coat so let's just uh, bring that in there and right there there we go okay cool and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the grenade itself okay so for that we're gonna go back to our metals and let's see where's that where do you go where do you go right here and if we scroll down we have this kind of camo type deal here we're gonna double click on that and initially we're gonna start with our fill mode and let's just uh, click on that and there we go you can see it looks quite nice but we've got a lot of openings here so we're gonna increase that brush size and we're gonna start to fill in those areas where there is no paint And again, I'll try to do it fairly quickly. And the real effect that makes it pop is when you take your time to do this properly. And because I got my fill mode on, this is fairly easy. Okay, let's take that as well. And again, you want to have some areas that are maybe not in, uh, covered entirely. And then what you can do is you can go to your uh, airbrush, for example. You can increase the size. You can go up here and decrease opacity if you like. And just by brushing over those areas, you can kind of create, you know, some darker spots if you want. But it's really an amazing texture when you look at it. Okay? So you can use brushes and so forth. Now, one thing I would like to do is add that yellow paint up here. So I'm going to switch back to paints. Double click on that. We're going to go up here. We're going to change to bright yellow. Hit OK. Then we're going to switch, you know, we're actually still in our airbrush, that's fine. We're going to decrease the size a bit. And we're going to add that yellow paint up here. Okay, let's increase the opacity. And I always think that this is a very cool effect because you can see that camo texture underneath, which is kind of cool. All right, and then if you want, you can switch to an actual brush. I kind of make that a very thick yellow if you like. I don't really like it that much, so I'm just gonna do a little bit just for demonstration purposes. So you can see how that works. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add some scratches and rust, which is always cool, okay? So we're going to go to our rust section here. We're going to double click on this guy. And you probably think you're not seeing anything happening, but if you look closely, you can see that as I click and drag, and just click, drag, and release, every time I do that, I get a little bit of effect on my material. It doesn't really look it, but I can assure you it happens. Okay. And as we click along, that's working nicely. I can increase my size and my brush here. And we're just gonna throw some on here as well, just to get some 
color changes and maybe even here as well okay cool and then what we can do is you can go into uh, let's do dirt and let's try and add some dirt in these areas here oh that's not good let's try that again double click on that yeah that's better and there you go so even in areas where like i just showed you um you know you can't find uh you didn't cover it entirely i'll show you here for example but adding that here it's an amazing effect and i'm exaggerating of course but you know just increase the size here add some dirt to the grenade itself and by building layer on layer that's what in my opinion makes it look fantastic right and you know you can go nuts with that if you like but this is just how i like it we'll do one more we'll do uh, let's see i thought we had all right scratches okay we'll take one of these steel scratches and let's see what we get you see how it takes that edge there and makes that edge for the metal a bit shiny that's a very nice effect here and we'll do that here as well i kind of like how that pops makes the whole thing look more metal-ish all right and that is pretty much it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a nice render shot let's uh do something like this I'm gonna go uh, to my render window looks like I hit something very weird hang on hopefully I didn't screw things up just give me a sec guys okay here we are so uh, let's see, we're in our render room. Uh, not quite sure why it's doing that. Hang on. And actually guys, just to demonstrate to you guys that all these maps uh, are exported and can be used in different programs, what I'll do is I will load everything up in Marmoset and show you how that looks from there, okay? So I'm gonna go up to File, Export Objects and Textures and uh, we'll call this grenade in new because um, let's call it newest and save that out i want tga file that's all good and i'm going to hit okay all right so i'm just going to jump into marmoset for the sole purpose of showing you how this looks uh, so uh, see you there All right, guys, this is our prop in um, Marmoset Toolbag. I plugged in the uh, maps, and as you can see, it looks pretty cool. So that's how you texture this guy in the 3D code. And if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'd love to see you guys again. Thanks for watching. Bye.